At this time, we will be observing the Lord's table, which Jesus told his followers to do. The Lord's Supper is a remembrance of Jesus' death. And each Sunday, we look at a passage of scripture to prepare for us to take partake of this. And if you don't have a Bible, we ask that you just raise your hand. Uh, somebody will see that you get one. If you don't own a Bible, that is yours to keep. When you get your Bible, turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 26. And we're going to look at what Jesus said about the bread and the cup, which we will soon be partaking of. And then we'll also look at what the Bible says about the cup which Jesus drank. The scene is this, the last Passover feast that Jesus had with his disciples. And follow along as I read in Matthew 26. We'll start with verses 26 through 30. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of this vine from now on until the day that I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This morning we're going to eat a piece of cracker which will represent the body of Christ. It was necessary for the Son of God to take on a human body in order to suffer for our sins and to die in our place. And then we will take a cup which uh, represents his blood, the blood which he shed on the cross. Jesus said that this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. When Jesus said, my, my uh, blood of the covenant, he was referring to the new covenant which, Jesus, or which God had promised through the prophet Isaiah, or Jeremiah rather, in Je Jeremiah 31, he, uh, he mentioned, uh, and this is the, the time when the nation of Israel was living under the old covenant, which was established through Moses at Sinai. But the new covenant uh, was going to be inaugurated by the blood of Jesus, just as the old covenant had been inaugurated by the blood of animals. And uh, the new covenant promise is that I will forgive their iniquities and their sin. I will, remo will remove their sin. And the one, the one sacrifice of Jesus uh, came at a tremendous cost. And it removes forever all the sins of all those who will believe on him. And uh, we're going to look here at the, cons the cost that this was to our Savior when he uh, died for us. Follow along as I read. We're going to skip on down to Ma uh, Matthew 26, 36, and we'll read through 42. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and two of the, the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He went a little beyond them, fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it, if, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, said to Peter, So you men could not sleep, watch with me for one hour. Keep watching and praying so that you will not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again a second time and prayed again, saying, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. As the time drew near for Jesus to be crucified, 
he began to be very grieved and distressed, and he confided in the three disciples, Peter, James, and John, that my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. He prayed to the Father. He referred to the suffering that he was about to endure as the cup which he would drink. As Jesus anticipated what he would soon experience, the sinless Son of God recoiled at the thought that he would suffer the penalty due to our sins. This would require him to suffer death in the place of us as though he were the sinner. But more than that, he would suffer separation from his father with whom he had through all eternity known nothing but joyous and loving fellowship and relationship. The sin for which he would suffer was so reprehensible to his father that the father must turn his face away from his son as he, as he bore the penalty for our sin. He would soon cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For Jesus to suffer separation from his father was more painful for, to him than it ever would have been to us because we were born in the state of alienation from God. Jesus had never known in any measure at all alienation to his father. Jesus had prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Paying the price of our sin was going to be so painful that Jesus would gladly have uh, passed it by. Yet he and the father had planned for the son to become a man to redeem fallen man from their sin before the world began. So he prayed again, my father, if this cannot pass away, unless I drink it, your will be done. Divine love for fallen man had won out over the cost to the Godhead. Jesus was committed to the mission for which he came into the world. Even after Peter sought to protect Jesus by cutting off a servant's ear, Jesus said, put the sword back into the sheath. The cup which the Father has given me, shall, shall not I drink it? He was committed to do the Father's will. Believer, as you partake this morning, remember how reprehensible your sins are to God. Remember the cost to the Father and to the Son of your rescue from sin. Remember the love that the Father and the Son demonstrated in the plan that they carried out to redeem you. Search your heart, confessing sin, and, and after your heart is clear before God, you may, pe may partake of the cup and the, and the cracker. What I say next <clears throat> is for any who may be here who have never really received Jesus Christ as their Savior, please let the cup and the bre bread pass by. Uh, it's, it was meant for Jesus for those who love and follow him. But please consider that the death of Jesus is the only one that God has provided for salvation from sin and for bringing lost sinners into his heavenly kingdom. If you would like to speak with someone about this, someone will be up at the, your left front corner of this auditorium after the service. They would be glad to pray with you, to, to visit with you about this. So men, come and serve us.